You're very, very easy to work with. You're lovely to work with. Yeah. Well, I just leave you to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. You just leave me to it. There's a reason. You, there's a reason you get other people to do it, and that's because they know what they're doing better than you do. Um, actually, I've read some books narrated by authors themselves, and I can't say I would even some really big names, and I can't say I would recommend it. Get, really? get somebody who knows what they're doing to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's brilliant. It's straightforward. And if anybody's thinking, oh, should I get a Yeah, you should always get an audio book done of every book you do. I Always. think the phrase you used, I think it was the first time we spoke, you said, because if you've got a book and you've got it out, and it's out there and it's in print and it's in Kindle or it's in whatever it is. If you're not turning it into an audiobook, you're leaving money on you the are. table. You absolutely are. Yeah. Because it's no more work for you. It's no more work at all. Um, you just, well, okay, yeah, you do have to find, you do have to vet the narrators and listen to a lot of auditions. Yes. But after that, the thing the thing records itself as far as you're concerned it's great yeah and uh, people like me all over the world in their home studios put them all together for you and the next thing you know it's on sale and it's selling thousands and thousands these have sold thousands and thousands and thousands of downloads i had no idea there were goblins living in the jungle more of your kin master crunk mariska said the small council that had gathered in Hennig's chamber had walked in unison to meet the visitors. No, Crunk snapped. They are goblins. We are groblins. That's different. You goblin, Boss said. He'd been coaxed out of the warren by Grobbit's constant demands to see the tower. Are green. Have ears. Goblin. How are things in Cardiff? Good. Yeah, can't complain, yeah. <laughs> Goblin Kin, it's the fifth book in the series. First yes. of all, thank you so much for choosing me as the narrator for all five and the spin-off book as well. Yeah, it's just uh, it's they're just a great series of books. As you know, um, when we first worked together, I'd never even heard of Lit RPG. Mm -hmm. But it really is a serious genre with uh, yeah. a massive following worldwide. How, what attracted you to that genre? Um, I think it's, whilst, you're right, whilst it is a, a bigger genre, it's still quite new and it gives you the room to kind of be a bit more experimental than you would be in maybe like a standard fantasy genre. You, if you've got a wild idea that you don't think would get on, they'll, they'll probably go for it. Like you can, you can kind of stretch your wings a bit, you know, have a bit of fun with it. So I, I think that was, that was the the attraction is that because of the fan base because of the way they are and how they yeah, I think, they think they're a lot more accepting of kind of new ideas and new things because it is a relatively newish genre you know it's only a few years old yeah uh, i think you can if you've got a you know something that would be crazy in a normal fantasy book you can you can try it like it doesn't they're up for it which is great it's great um how would you explain the lit rpg genre why it's different to regular fantasy books so I think the, the the conceit of the genre is that they've all got some kind of overriding numerical system to them that's very video game-esque. A lot of them straight up are set in video games, but I think it's the people like to see progression in things. And I think that's that's an attraction as well. You can you can follow along with the characters, you know where they go in, and you can kind of kind of theory craft kind of what they're going to do at any given time you think well i know he can do this i know he can do that and how would i react in that situation i think it's a very appealing kind of idea yeah it is a great way to keep score of how the characters are developing through the series how they're adding to their skills and their skills are literally being measured in the cards that they get yeah. and what they can do with the cards when their attack and defense ratings go up and everything it is quite it is quite good because you see gareth who was he was thrown into a world that he didn't understand and he had to learn pretty quickly how these 
cards worked because you know uh, in the story they they find these cards which isn't the normal way of getting them but they find them and they can there are formal duels with other duelists and then there are the 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 proper serious ones against some pretty um, pretty outrageous monsters i mean you've got everything coming to life from lizards to plants you know it's uh, or, or lizards made of plants i mean it is it is uh, it is really a lot of fun and uh, it's been great to be a part of it as the journey goes on and in each of the books so far the characters have been on a different quest Mm -hmm. now this time their quest is probably the biggest you can get they have to save the world yeah um why did you decide to go for broke this time and say right they're gonna go for the biggie well i think it's always been there isn't it in the background kind of the the idea and the each book and it's just like the kind of progression now where they they know what they need to do and they don't need to go out and do it. Doesn't necessarily work out the way they intended. You tend to get get sidetracked a bit, but that, that's kind of the progression now. They know what needs to be done and kind of how to go about it because they've experienced it in past books. Each kind of yeah. step along the way that they need to do. So now they can be more direct about it. Be more yeah. Right, well, we know we need to go to X place and and do Y at each location, so they can kind of make a plan and set whereas before they were just kind of fumbling through and they that's yeah they had this they had the smaller quests though in each book yeah. didn't they that they were given but this one they've got an and they, they still have the smaller quests but they have this overriding big one to save the yeah. world yeah. yeah it's given it it's given it an extra dimension how do you think the characters have changed as the series has progressed apart from you know getting the extra skills and stuff um i mean i think obviously the they're kind of in the first book or two, they're kind of thrown together almost with no choice. And now they've grown a lot more comfortable with each other, um, a lot more comfortable with the world around them and the, the places they've been. And obviously they've expanded their repertoire almost of, of other characters around them and yes. who they interact with. And it's it's kind of becoming more of a kind of a cohesive unit rather than just four individuals who are just they are a team now there's no question they are a team but it's good that you know you mentioned the other characters you know like crunk for one and and uh and other and goblins and that who have come into it well they are now taking the role of the interact because they you know there was there was something to the interaction between them when they were at first when they were really strangers and didn't know each other but then once they became a team and knew each other quite well that kind of changed a little bit, but in a good way because you know you, you're dealing with a camaraderie. But you can almost you can almost see the eye rolling going on when certain characters still, you know, when Sarker has said something, for instance, and you know um, some of the other characters uh, will react to that. So there's still a bit of that there. But I do like the way that the the outside characters come in and they kind of they play off because I, I've always maintained. And I, and I had a, a long conversation with a radio boss once when I was when he said I'd been rude to a caller. Mm. And I said, yeah, but the callers are my friends. And he went, no, they're not. You don't even know them. They're strangers. I said, yeah, but the callers have to feel like they're my friends and behave like they're a friend because they're acting as a surrogate to all the other listeners who are listening yeah. to the radio show. I said, and we're really horrible to our friends. And he's like, no, you're not. I said, no, we are. We're only nice to strangers. I mean, if a stranger said, it's my birthday, you'd say, oh, oh, really? That's really nice. What, what are you doing today? But if your friend said, it's my birthday, you go, well, how old are you, old bastard? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and so, and so they, they, the, the team in the book are becoming a bit more like that as they get closer. So you can bring the ones from outside and they have a little bit more respect for them because they don't know them so well. And it's yeah. it's nice to to feel that that dynamic, which reinforces what the team has become, that they are being not as nice to each other because they are now friends, you know, with with certain caveats and uh, and what have you, and and certain rivalries, but there is now starting to bubble under just a little bit of romance how far i don't want you to give too much away or or who it is because people may have only read the the earlier series of books but it's just starting to simmer how far are you prepared to take that ah we'll find out (laughs) Um, (laughs) okay you know i I don't as i said before i I tend to just write the book as they come to me so i know as much as basically everybody else until i start writing it so we'll find out we'll see what see what happens with that yeah and you still yeah. work that way. You don't structure it out, and 
you must have certain mileposts when you start because well, I mean, like the last I, one i don't know how many words it is but it ran for over 11 hours you know of recording the audiobook version yeah yeah i mean i have a vague overview of kind of where i wanted to start and where i wanted to end but how exactly i get there i kind of leave up to well maybe halfway through you'll have an idea that's interesting to pursue and you kind of end up going in a better direction you know um i know a lot of writers do plan everything out from start to finish but i'm that just doesn't work for me. It gets too restrictive then, and then I'd, I'd end up throwing it out after about three chapters anyway. So it's a waste of time, <laughs> waste of time and effort. And when we started working together, you had a day job, and yes. you went full time. You're still full time author now. Still full time. Yeah, yeah. What advice would you have? Because there's probably a lot of people watching this who are dipping their toe in the water. They're starting to write. They've always wanted to write. What advice would you give them from someone who's done it, who started out part-time and is now a professional author? What advice would you give them? I think the, the best advice I can give is to just just start. A lot of people will write a book and put it in a drawer and never do anything with it. And it takes a long time. I've been doing this for, for years at this point. It takes a long time to get to the point where you can sustain yourself. You know, not, not everybody is Stephen King and they drop a book and it sells millions. It's more about you have quite a few books and they sell well enough in aggregate that yeah. you can, you know, afford to do it. So um, I think just don't wait. The quicker you start, the quicker you can start building up your, your books and your fan base and then that improves better books. And it's all a kind of reinforcing cycle at that point. But a lot of people will just wait years and years until they've got the perfect book the perfect novel they've written, but there's no such thing. Yeah. You know, that you've got to learn to think, no, that's good enough and go to the next one. And it's probably better than you think. That tends to be the, tends to be the case. That's <laughs> people, a lot of writers can be very perfectionist. And, yes. Um, no, just, just don't wait about it. It's, there's no, just get on with it. Yeah. yeah just, just do it. It's, it's, it's a bit of useless advice. Just do it. But I well, kind of, you, you know, know there's, there's Nike were right all those years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, even though I think my mother came up with that one, the Nike slogan. Yeah. Just do it. Um, I think I mentioned this uh, one of the times we spoke before, but one of my favorite quotes is, those that write are writers and those that wait are waiters. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it is. You've, you've just You've You've just got to get on with it and you've got to believe in yourself and not let anybody stop you and just say whatever happens this is gonna this is gonna go this is the way i'm gonna go so what difference in your life have you seen then since you've become a professional author it must be nice managing your time completely now it is there's you know there's upsides to thinking well i need to do you know a particular errand on a certain day you can you don't have to you know, book time off work or fit it around yeah. schedules or anything like that there is a downside you tend to, to be honest work more than you would have done otherwise yes. because you yeah once it's your time, you, you kind of, there is a little bit in the back of your head that's always like, well, I could be working right now, which isn't healthy. You've got to try and set a limit, but I think everybody who works themselves will creep over that, that self-imposed yeah. limit at some point, right? Yeah. Um, but now, otherwise, it's just, I, I spend most of my days the same as I did before. I get up at, you know, for, to start work at nine o'clock. I try and finish work by five o'clock and then keep a schedule. Um, I think if you just start kind of letting it go however you you wanted to i think you would end up doing less and not doing enough so i try and yeah. keep it as if it, as if well, it is a job as if it were any other job you know, yeah that's the important thing i think yeah i think i've been along the same journey because well you probably know i was a radio presenter and then i got fired well, i got fired a lot but i finally got fired just before the pandemic which meant it was impossible to to get back into radio at that stage and so i just started doing audiobooks because i knew i could do it from home but audiobooks became so successful that when I did start getting a couple of radio jobs, weekly shows on two mm. different radio stations and working from home, I used to spend every Thursday, just used to be my radio days. And so I would work on my, you know, do my prep and record the, the two radio shows I did on a Thursday. And in the end, I worked out, you know what, these audiobooks are going so well, you know, this is, and I packed them in. I actually retired from radio because I love you know, not having to go because I've got my studio at home. I don't have to go into a radio station and deal with salespeople and managers and have conversations about phone calls, whether somebody was, whether I was rude to somebody. Else. It doesn't really matter now. 
All I deal with is, is the authors and the rights holders and occasionally a couple of agencies. Tanta are a nice agency in, where are they? Somewhere in the United States. I should know where yeah, they, are, but yeah, they are. I but I, I do a lot of work with them and, and they're they're lovely, you know, and, and uh, I just I've just had met the nicest, most interesting people um, all over the world, mostly in the US. And and I just love the lifestyle of you know because I'm living a, an author's lifestyle even though I'm not writing which is just great I'm just reading their work I'm I'm poaching basically and bathing in their reflected glory by reading their words out loud it's just lovely I mentioned the U.S. and you know I see the the sales figures and uh, that we get uh, via Amazon and um, it's. The Goblin Summoner series sells way better. Well, the audiobooks, they're the only numbers I look at. The yeah. audiobooks sell way better in the United States than they do in the UK. Is that the same with the Kindle and print versions? Or yeah. is, is that, yeah. is it's it really? The same. It's the same across the board, and it's the same across, from speaking with, you know, I speak with a lot of authors, um, especially ones in the same genre, it's the same across all of Lit RPG. The, the fan base is predominantly American. It's not right. really caught on in the UK and Europe and places like that yet. Um, so that's 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 the norm. It's about ninety percent American. Um, yeah. Eventually, I guess we'll catch up. Um, yes. So yeah, there's room yeah. for growth. There there's is. Even, yeah, but, there's room for yeah. growth. That's that's good because we we usually follow America uh, with the big trends. They've been following us recently. Well, maybe not so recently. A lot of game shows started here, and we used to buy game shows from America, didn't yeah. we? I mean, Family Fortunes and Sale of the Ascension and all that. And, and then they started buying Millionaire and Weakest Link and stuff from us, so it did change. So, But, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I hope we get there soon because uh, it would be nice. I mean, they sell well worldwide, to be fair. Uh, it's just that America's probably part of it is America's such a much bigger market. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's how many times? It's something like eight times the size of the UK market. I, can't, I don't know what the actual figure is. It could be as high as 10 times the size. It is uh, a substantial market. So if you're going to do well, that's the place to do well. It doesn't, yeah. it's, 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 it's not uh, holding it back. How did you find the process of turning the series into audiobooks? I, th I think it's, it's, well worth doing for anybody who wants to do it it's, it's very straightforward it's a lot easier than i think a lot easier at my end than you would think it would be i'm sure it's more difficult for the uh the audio no engineering. you're very you're very very easy to work with you're lovely to work with yeah well i just leave you to it <laughs> yeah exactly that's what i mean you just leave me to it there's a reason you, there's a reason you get other people to do it and that's because they know what they're doing better than you do um Actually, I've heard some books narrated by authors themselves, and I can't say I would, even some really big names, and I can't say I would recommend it. Get, really? get somebody who knows what they're doing to do it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's brilliant. It's straightforward. And if anybody's thinking, oh, should I get it? Yeah. You should always get an audio book done of every book you do. I always. think the phrase you used, I think it was the first time we spoke, you said, because if you've got a book and you've got it out, and it's out there and it's in print and it's in Kindle or it's in whatever it is, if you're not turning it into an audiobook, you're leaving money on the you table. You absolutely are. Yeah. Because there's no more work for you. There's no more work at all. Um, you just, well, okay, yeah, you do have to find, you do have to vet the narrators and listen to a lot of auditions, yes. But after that, the thing, the thing records itself as far as you're concerned. It's great, yeah. And uh, people like me all over the world in their home studios put them all together for you and the next thing you know it's on sale and it's selling thousands and thousands these have sold thousands and thousands and thousands of downloads yeah well if you'd like a, a download for free of this latest book goblin kin which is number five in the series five, if you've yeah. if you've never tried lit rpg if you've wondered about this series and wanted to stick your toe in without risking any of your own money you can get a free copy if you send me an email and ask for one. Ask nicely. Uh, make sure you mention whether you're in the UK or the USA. I'm sorry, out other countries I can't do that. I can't give you a free one. But from the UK and the USA, I can give you a free one. And if you're one of the next six people that sends me an email, the email address is in the description. If you go down there and you just say uh, you saw our chat and you'd like a free 
download. I'll send you a code, but make sure you mention whether you're in the UK or the USA because they're different codes and they, they don't cross-pollinate. If you're one of the next six people, so the first six people, to send me an email to that email address down below, uh, I'll send you a code for free. If you're watching this when they're already gone and you want to buy it, there's also links to Amazon so you can download from there and it's well worth checking out, especially if you've already got or listened to the first uh, four audio books and the spin-off. The spin-off's a good book as well. The uh, the spin-off's really good and it, it comes off at a place where you, you know, I would have thought there's going to be a spin-off it would have been the main character, but it isn't. The spin-off, what's the, what's the title of the spin-off again? Uh, Wake the Dead is the title. Of Wake the Dead, yes, and Jack's the character in that one if you're familiar familiar with him. Um uh, it's a, uh, it's another, it's it's a whole different adventure, but it's still within the same, within the what do you call it, the same ecosystem? Is that the right? Yeah, the yeah. same, the same universe. Yeah, wake the dead. That's in there. Good. Oh, it's great. So the email address is in the in the link. Just just ask for one, and if you're one of the first six, uh, possibly if you're number seven and you ask nicely and you beg, uh, but definitely the first six. Okay then. So uh, will there be a book seven? Uh, yeah, yeah, at some point. I forget book six first, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, at some point, yeah, yeah. It's uh, That's on the, the list of things that need to be worked on. And how far do you think you can take them? How many do you think will be in the series when you're done? Uh, kind of in my head, I am I think 10 is kind of the, the number that would so kind we're of just over halfway. Up. Just yeah. over halfway, yeah, but who knows? You never know when you get, you could always find another book or things could work out differently. It's, but around could, around about that figure, could be other spin-offs too, couldn't there? Could be yeah. different characters, different yeah. things. Okay, so what's next for you? As yeah, uh, apart from apart from another four of these books at least <laughs> in this series, what else is going on? Because your life must have changed quite a bit since you turned pro. You must mm -hmm. be tempted to do other things and other genres and what have you. Um, well, there's always there's always more books than you're writing at the at the moment. I'm close to finishing uh, Real Time Star Commander Four. Oh, that was a good one. How? How? Uh, yeah, I did all three of the first three you in that series. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, was. Oh, cool. th these were great books. This was. If you don't know, this was a guy who was a video game player. You know, and the video game was basically he was in charge of a starship that was basically at war, and he gets abducted by aliens to because they need his skills to actually really fight battles in space. Terrific, yes. Sorry, number four you're working number on. Number four, Great. yeah. Looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, finally, finally get that out of there. And then, then who knows? Um, sure, an idea will come to me, or I'll continue one of the, the other series. Yeah, We the People, or mm -hmm. Level Up Kaiju. Yeah, yeah, we've done a lot. We've done a lot, and they are great. Terrific books. Uh, check it out. Tracy Gregory, thank you so much. This one, the latest one that's out as an audiobook, is Goblin Kin. 